Hi guys, it's Carla. Today we're going to paint this um, these purple flowers against kind of a blurry, um, blurry greenery. I'm using an eight by ten canvas panel and acrylic paint. This is light green, chrome yellow, white, black, and violet. Now for the background, I'm going to use my half inch mop brush. Um, if you don't have a mop brush, you could also use like a, um, a hog bristle brush or a, um, or like a deer foot stippler, uh, something stiff. So ironically, it's either something stiff or something really soft that causes this blur. Okay, so I'm going to start with my lighter colors, which is, um, there's some green in there and there's a little bit of purple, you know, blurry purple in the background. Um, I'm going to start with my green. And I have, I've already wet my mop brush and dried it. Okay, I'm going to start with just the plain light green. And just wherever I want this, um, I'm not real picky about the shapes because when I come back in with my black, it's I'm going to be reshaping it anyway. Um, so just wherever you want some of this greenery. And right here is where the flowers are going to be, so we're not going to focus much on that. And this is going to look uh, really bad before it looks good, so don't get discouraged with it. All right, I think I've got all my green in, and now there's a little bit of um, purple up there at the top. So I'm going to mix some white and purple. And this is like, um, you know, I guess some of the background flowers, so they're blurry. I'll put some more down here. Okay, now I've rinsed my brush and I'm going to fill the rest in with black. And when I do that, I'm going to blur it into the um, colors and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so when you get up to a color, you're going to make sure that most of the paint is off your brush. And then you just want to lightly tap. Um, part of my brush is going into the black and part of it's going into the green. And that will blur them together. Just very lightly tapping. When you pick up more paint, fill in your empty spots until until you don't have a lot of paint on your brush, and then you can come in and tap around your colors. If you're using your um, like a deer foot stippler or you know some kind of stiff bristled brush. Um, Instead of tapping, you're going to kind of scrub. 
and it'll give you almost the same effect. All right, now I've got kind of a blurry look, but this last finishing touch will um, it kind of bring it all together and unify it. I'm gonna use a synthetic brush for this. It doesn't have to be an angle brush, just some kind of soft synthetic brush. And I'm gonna get it wet and pick up some, some of that green. And I'm gonna keep adding water to it until I get a green glaze. Okay, I think that's thin enough. And I've already dried this. It's got to be dry to do this. And I'm going to go over the whole canvas with this glaze. And it'll, um, what it does is it kind of seeps down into the little dry pockets and it, um, and it helps to bring the green and black together. Okay, so now at this point, I can come back and put in a few little bright spots um, if I want to, or I can leave the background like this. But I'm gonna brighten up my purple a little bit.
the main thing to remember when you're trying to create a blurry look is you don't want a lot of paint on your brush. So you can wipe it off on your towel, you can use it other places and then come back with the dry brush or whatever, but you don't want much paint on there. I like creating little, what I call hot spots, where you've got like just a little bright area, like maybe light is hitting it or whatever. I think I'm going to make one right here, too. Okay, now with my angle brush, I'm going to come in with some of my like stems and leaves that are a little more clear. They're not so blurry. And I'm going to use my green, a little bit of yellow, touch of purple. That just kind of dulls it down a little bit. And I don't want these to be like real defined, so I'm just going to kind of keep them loose, but um, I don't want to just put flowers on top of this blurry background because then it's like they're floating. I'll pick up a touch of white just to put a little little bright spots on some of my leaves I mean my stems okay now I'm going to start on my flowers and I'm going to start with my quarter inch angle brush if you're working with a bigger canvas you can use a bigger brush so in order to get that brilliant color against this dark background, we're gonna have to add white to it. So I'm gonna start out with my lighter um, shades of purple and then I can add back in the dark. But the white being mixed with it will help it to um, stand out against this dark background. Okay, so I'm going to use this angle brush to put in my um, petals. And I can go ahead and use the tip of the brush to kind of show myself where the center of my flower is. So, like, I'm going to have one about right here. That's going to be covered up later, so it doesn't matter. Um, but it might help you to know where your flowers are going to be located.
Okay, now before I put these really crisp flowers in, I see one back there that's um, more in the distance and it's blurred out. So I'm gonna just very vaguely put that in. I'm gonna get most of the paint off my brush and just put in the indication of some blurry petals back there and um, the rest of the flower is going to be covered up by this this flower so I don't have to worry too much with it I just want to get that in there okay doesn't look like much now but it'll make sense later all right now I'm going to pick up that light purple and I want to start with my most distant flowers so obviously that one is the most distant but then I see one back here that's kind of uh, behind everything and I'm just going to use the um, the angle on my brush the tip going out and I just want to pull in each petal And you don't have to um, go slow with it. I was going slow to show you how I'm doing it, but um, it it works better if you don't go slow because then it's not so perfect. And you know, nature is not perfect, so you don't want to try to make it look that way. And you also don't want to line up your the edge of your petals like they need to be kind of different lengths and and look um, organic okay now I'll be coming back in with darker and lighter colors so but I've got my shape in there and now I'm going to move on to, looks like this one. Now I'm not worried about the center right now. I can, you know, even if I paint into it like that, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna be painting that back in. Now these, um, we've got some petals on this side of the flower that instead of going out, they're coming back over the center. So I can't put those in yet because I've got to put the center in so that those can come over it. So right now it's just going to be these, these front petals. All right. Um, looks like this one will be next. And when you're putting these in, pay attention to where the other flowers are to know how um, long to make your petals. So like these petals should be coming into these petals. So if they're not, then they're not long enough. And I'm not going to worry too much about this area because that flower will be covering it. Okay, so I've got this flower here, and these petals come almost, 
almost over to it. And then they hide back behind those petals. Now all these will look more dimensional when we get the other colors in. Um, all right, so now this one is next. And this one, these two are our biggest flowers. So make sure you get them, get those petals long enough. These go kind of into that one. And they come almost over to this center. Keep perspective in mind so these these petals right here are kind of facing us like they're coming out this way uh, so they're not going to be as long as as these back ones where you're seeing the whole petal now we've got this one and you're pretty much seeing all of its petals and it comes all the way over to those and it's gonna come out over that center which I'm sure I'll have to fix it when I come back and put that center in All right, now this flower right here is not even opened up all the way, so it's going to have um, petals in the back that kind of go out that way. And then when we're using different colors, you'll be able to tell that, like, I'm going to go ahead and show you that these are going to be dark back here. And then you're going to have the It's too wet right now, but the light ones will be coming out shorter in front of it, so it kind of shapes the flower that way. Okay, um, I think I'll go ahead and put my center in, and I'm going to use my Deerfoot stippler for that. It's it's the kind of a smaller one, whatever size you feel comfortable with. And for now, I'm just going to go ahead and use just plain yellow and just get it kind of blocked in. We'll be doing other stuff to it, but this will help me to know exactly what, what's going on in the flower. These petals are going to come back out over this, so it, I'm not concerned about that.
All right, so I'm not even close to being finished with those centers, but, you know, the shape is in there. All right, so I'm going to go back to my petals now. And again, I'm going to start with the most distant petals first. Um, that blurry one, that's pretty much all I'm going to do to it. It's, it's in the background. So now I want to pick up just purple, just that dark violet. And start putting in my darker shades so I'm starting at the center and I'm I'm pulling it out but I'm not pulling it all the way out uh, I mean some of them you can because you know as I said earlier they need to be different lengths but um, I'm not covering up everything that I just put in All right, um, I think this one was the next one. Again, I can't do this, these petals yet because they're gonna be coming out over my center, so I'll have to come back and do those later. So I just wanna get some, some contrast in there and some depth. You could do this flower with um, any color. It wouldn't have to be purple. I don't know what kind of flowers these are, but um, art doesn't have to make sense. So whatever color you think looks good or like if you're gonna hang it in your house somewhere, then um, use a color that you use in your house. What I don't wanna do is make a pattern. So see how I'm skipping around? Um, nature is not perfect and you don't want to try to, you don't want to paint it like it is because then it won't look real. These petals are kind of um, layered. They're not. It's not just one layer of petals. There's. They're kind of stacked, or I don't know what you would call it, but but you can with the the darks and the lights, you can give it that effect. Now, before I move on to the light shades in my petals, I'm gonna go ahead and finish my centers because some of them, you know, I need them to be finished. I also see a little bit of 
green back here for that uh, flower right there. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to use my yellow and a touch of purple to put in this kind of dark border around the center. Again, keep perspective in mind. Um, like this center right here, I've got a dark border on this side because I'm kind of looking at it almost from the side of the flower. So that other side is brighter. So I'm not going to put in that dark border around it. Now I'll rinse to my brush and I'm going to brighten up this yellow. Okay, now notice on this where I put that dark border in, I don't want to just stop short right there. I want to lightly tap over the border so that some of it shows through, but, you know, it's not this sudden line there. So it kind of gradually gets darker. If you don't have a different stippler, again, you can just use um, some kind of stiff bristled brush that where you can tap, tap this in there. I want to make sure my yellow is nice and bright. Because when it dries, it's going to be a little duller. All right, now I've cleaned my brush. This part is going to seem a little bit strange, but I'm going to pick up just black and tap it into the very center. Um, that one has it and this one has a little bit of black and the other two don't don't have that so I rinse my brush and now I'm going to start with my green Uh, 
me start with this one. So I want to leave that dark in the center, but I don't want it to be like a, a line. Whatever brush you use, just make sure that it's small enough to do this. I'm going to put a little bit of green in this one, even though I don't see any in there. Now, one thing you can do, too, if you have a stylus, you can use it, or you can use... A toothpick or something like that and you can pick up just that bright yellow and tap in more defined um, little seed pods or whatever those are This really helps to add realism to it. Okay, so see what it did for that one compared to the others. So if you have something that, um, just something with either a point or, I don't know if you can see this stylus. It's got kind of a little round tip on it, but even a toothpick or something would work. So, um... I'm going to go ahead and do that to the rest of these. And um, and the green part too on this one because it's it's actually our focus, our focal flower. Like it's, it's the main one. So it's a little more defined. Okay. So I think I'm finished with my centers. So now I'm going to come back um, with this first color that I used and put in the rest of my petals, the ones that come out over some of the centers. Okay, so there's some here, kind of. They're actually mostly dark. I don't know if you can even tell, but um, see it comes out over the, the center of, of the flower. 
Okay, and I think this was the only other one that came out over another one. Okay, now I'm gonna mix up a very pale purple. It's almost white. All right, so I'm gonna start with my most distant flower. And it's mostly on the tips. Um, where you're going to put the highlights. So there's times when you're not even going to use the full length, the full width of your brush. You're going to use just the tip of that angle. Again, don't put a lot of thought into this um, because you'll end up getting it too, too perfect. All right, now remember I talked about the layering. So you've got petals back here that I'm going to highlight the tips of them. I like the bottom layer. And then and then we can come back and create another layer that's appears shorter. Okay, so I'm going to show you close up so that you can see what I'm talking about. So if you highlight the tips of these outer ones, that creates your bottom layer. And then you highlight, highlight the tips of some, or just create tips right in here, and that makes it look layered. Okay. Moving on. This actually should have been done before that one, but Okay, now I'm going to show you on this one how you can create uh, more dimension on it. All right, so the tips of some of these are highlighted. And this is the, like the back layer. And then 
I'm creating different little layers here by highlighting the tips and then I'm going to work on this this side of the flower and if I define some petals right here with my highlights then it'll create like a like it's getting ready to open up it'll create different little layers there All right, now I've rinsed my brush and I'm gonna use just white. And I'm gonna be super careful with this because there's not a lot in most paintings that are just white. Um, but it does add a little pop. It adds a little more depth. Sometimes you can use the very tip of your brush to um, kind of curve some of the petals. Now you can um, you can leave your painting the way it is right now, or you can do what I'm about to do and kind of change the flavor a little bit. Um, I'm going to use just an angle synthetic angle brush, and I'm going to bring some water over. I put some magenta on my palette, and I'm going to 
make a pink glaze because when you put pink and purple together it kind of creates this interesting color. This has to be dry to do this but see how that kind of adds a different flavor to it. Make sure it's dry before you do this. To me, the um, reference photo looks like it has some of this in there, so that's what gave me the idea. But you could leave it purple, and that would be totally fine. All right, there you have it. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that. And um, check out my other videos. And if you'll hit that bell, it will notify you of my upcoming videos anytime I upload one. So, thanks for watching. And until next time, happy painting. Bye, guys.